Hi guys. Afternoon. Five to four on a Wednesday. It's w- it is Wednesday, yeah. And today we thought we would um, do a video for the page on basically um, going through what it's like to open up Ableton for the first time. So if you're, you've been thinking about making music or that, and you've opened up Ableton and you've been looking at it like, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> We're going to decipher in this video today, in this video live. So if you've got any comments or whatever, let us know because we can see we're live at the minute uh, in the studio. So we're going to try and break down uh, the barriers of what it's like um, when you first open Ableton up for the first time. So if there's any beginners out there or anyone who wants to make music, this is a video because we're going to try and break it down and make it easier for you. We're just going to take you through what we do, especially pre-COVID with lessons and a lot of the classes and stuff that we do. So a lot of the time we may work with beginners. This is it. And a lot of the time beginners are really really put off because they see this blank canvas and they think i have no idea where i would start i don't know how to make music i'm not even going to bother so actually it's not as scary as you think it is and it can be a lot of fun and today maybe we'll show you just how to even get started i certainly know so many people that are so keen on making music or making a bootleg or making a mashup or doing a remix or even making their own original stuff yeah but that initial opening up Ableton and looking at it and going, what is this? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We're going to try and break that down for us. So, because that's what we do. That's what we do day in day out with the studio anyway. So, be nice to see you come in and anybody that's got comments, as Stephen said, please feel free to leave. Yep, feel free. Um, whatever it is you need or, answered or questions. Yes. Or if you know someone that's wanting to make music, get them tagged in this. Get them tagged in. It's a great shout. Um, I might even share it just now, just, you know. Let's just double check we're on. and then We're on, we're definitely on. We've got a few in. Hello, please say we're hello. We're on, we're Dro- on. Drop a wee thumbs up if you're if you're watching with us. Hello, Malk, what's happening, brother? Um, So we're going to share this one out. Yes. Oh, there's yourself, in. just heard yourself. You can hear me. It's always fun listening back to yourself, isn't it? Always great right, fun. I'll that. give it a wee share. So just let some people come in. But that's what we're going to do for the next wee half hour. Let's go through some of the techniques that you can basically use to get going to when get you first started. open up Ableton. Yeah. yeah. I think another thing people get bogged down again, it's like they think they need to know all, like you don't. Um, and I wouldn't worry too much about the like the engineering side, the process the and all that. The, no, the just compression, like forget it. all of that. Just forget get started on it. Just start a wee beat, get something down. It's the thing is, when you're creative and you want to create something. You don't want to get bogged down in the engineering side, the compression, the EQ, and all of the stuff that you'll learn eventually. You'll learn eventually, yeah. You want to just understand how to lay your idea down. Do you know what I mean? How to get a kick in. How to... What is MIDI? What is audio? How do these things work together? Mm -hmm. What effects do you need at the start? A lot of the time, you think you just need to chuck compressors onto channels and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. but that can end up leaving you in a bit of a sticky situation. Yeah. And again, it's all these things. It's like, we're just going to worry about getting started. Where things are, laying out a few things and even a couple of wee shortcuts in the keyboard. A couple of shortcuts. So, aye, this is for total beginners. Those who want to make music but have been a little bit intimidated by looking at Ableton and going, what am, what is this? This looks like this Tetris. Thing. But harder. But harder. <laughs> Much harder. But better. <laughs> how you doing, Ali Brown? Cheers for tagging Mike in there. Jason Curry, how are you, mate? Yes, definitely tag anyone that's total beginner that you are trying to convince to go over the line and start Aye. making music. Because end of the day, it's really fun. <clears throat> but we've all got that one pal as well that always shows you good tunes and you think, man, you should be making stuff. And oh, no, you know, no, I don't know, I don't know. Aye, aye. It's for these people right here. So um, without further ado, I'm just going to kick in, jump over. So you've you've installed Ableton, whether it's the the, the kind of free demo, whether it's the full version, whatever it is, you've opened it up. This is what you're... This is what you're faced with. Yeah. I'm going to take off stuff that I've got on here. So we just see what it looks like, right? And it'll probably look something like that. Two audio, two MIDI. Mm -hmm. Now, audio and MIDI, two different things. Totally. So I'd suggest when you first start is to forget the MIDI. Because really, uh, to break it down, audio is like an audio track. It's like a, a song. A sample. A sample or a, a, your favourite track you buy off iTunes, that's going to be in an, o- in an audio form. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. like mi- uh, MIDI, uh, sorry, um, WAV is audio, MP3 is audio. So when you open up an audio channel on Ableton, or they normally come opened up, mm-hmm. you can basically drag and drop tracks if, or if you want to do a mix, or you can drag and drop samples, whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I've seen myself sometimes not even use mi- any MIDI at all in making a full song. Mm-hmm. So it's good to maybe just look at audio first, I feel. Yeah. Before you start plugging in instruments and attaching stuff and, mm-hmm. and, and uh, VSTs and all that, you use MIDI for VSTs and stuff like that. I mean, you see, you do even like audio, a lot of hip hop producers, they'll use nothing but audio. Yeah. You know, or the, the, you know it's, it's stuff. Like, uh, this is, again, the simpler side, but audio is so versatile in how many shapes it could be you recording your own vocal and sending it to yourself to then put into the track absolutely or it could be from another song as steven said so what are we looking at here basically right this is the way ableton's laid out is the box on the left here um what you're seeing so all this stuff right so we'll start from the top left i've got ableton suite here now i think ableton's still on a deal through covid i think where it's like a 90 day free trial i think you can still get that so you'd be looking at the same thing so up here we've got categories Mm -hmm. and places and what's new is is a feature called collections categories up here is where you're finding your sounds finding your drums your instruments your effects and all of that so this is your source this window over here the one to your left is where you're getting everything that you're going to drag on to what I call the palette, which is over to your right. Now, why would I call it the palette, Gal? Because you're like an artist doing your painting and all that in the canvas. That's exactly. a blank canvas now. Aye, sorry, I said palette. I knew palette, what you meant. Palette would be the one well, on the left. Well, that's a palette, aye. The palette's on the left. I knew what you meant. Sorry. Bit of an the canvas here. is on the right. So, look, <laughs> we're using these wee analogies just to make it simpler, right? So, yeah. All your stuff is going to be over on the left-hand side, right? So when you first open up Ableton, don't be scared to click on everything over here. Absolutely. Everything is um, clickable. And you want to dive into that and learn as much as possible. You learn by clicking, right? So don't be scared of anything. Yeah. You're not going to break it. No. So over here you have categories. So you have sounds. So that's, you know, let's have a look. Ambient and evolving. Good if we had the speakers on. That. Can we hear that? All sorts of stuff in there again. Just go through it. Drums. Make some hip hop if you want, man. 808. Make some techno in 909. Um, you can go and look at all of these amazing drum kits, right? So these are actually, you program in these in through MIDI, which I'll show you in a minute. So instruments, I'll just give you an overall view here. Yep, yep, absolutely. Instruments, this is all the instruments that are built into Ableton. There's so many. Analog. You know, you can bring in external instruments down the line if you wanted to. Absolutely, which I'm sure a lot of people will do. Operator is just fantastic for subs and all sorts of cool sounds. Again, just go and experiment. Yeah. Audio effects. Now, this is effects that you'll only apply to your channels over here, right? So your EQs, your echo. If you're a DJ, you'll be familiar with some of these. Mm -hmm. You can drag and drop these onto your channels, which are over on the right once you have some sound on them. MIDI effects, now they have these effects just go on to MIDI channels. Which again will get Arpeggiators and stuff like that. Chords. Getting a wee bit more complicated, but don't want to be delving into that just yet. No. Uh, plugins. So if you've ever heard of VSTs or plugins, um, these um, are situated in here and they're third party. So Ableton don't own them, but um, they're compatible with Ableton. So for instance, um, like Isotope or Fab Filter. Native Instruments, all of these companies that make soft synths and, and VSTs and, and, and all of that, they come through here. So if you look, you'll see all the ones I've got, like uh, Silent and all of that. But again, you don't need all this to you get started. All of them, but that's where they, they, they lie in there. So, um, And heading down is just clips of audio and samples. I don't use much of these ones in here. There's absolutely loads, though. No. That's just a collection of all the samples. And again, more than enough to get you started. Absolutely. Like way more than enough. So down here, this is where it gets a little bit more customised. I can click add folders. So say, for instance, you've opened up Ableton and, and you've got a sample pack. 
what I'd suggest you do is you create a folder and put all your sample packs in there, which is what I've done. So my subfolder here is called Samples. I click it, and I have Techno, Vocals, Vengeance, Tribal, Trans, all sorts of stuff that's been subcategorized for me for my workflow, basically. So that's what you're going to be looking to do if you have uh, samples, really, and you want to get your samples in. You want to add a folder down at this bit. Now, you can add any sort of folder. So I've also got this linked to my downloads. So if I'm downloading something, I can easily drag it. Mm -hmm. I've also got it linked to my Dropbox so I can access files and projects and stuff like that. So that's how I lay out this side, the palette, if you like. Um, and, and keep experimenting. So, right, we're on. we are looked at the palette. We've got our canvas on the right. And now we've went through sounds. We're understanding where to find our sounds. So where, d how, how do you start? If you're a beginner and you're sitting there and you want to make a housey track, for example, where where is it you maybe start? Well, this is the thing, right? So let's say um, you have a sample pack, right? Which we actually have sample packs through our membership, which you can get. If you join up, free Dropbox, like get loads of samples in there. But basically, what you want to do is add a folder, locate your samples, and then boom, here we go. There's the samples. So if I look at, say, one of my folders, I've got techno here. Um, and I'll just say, I'll just grab one, deep techno, drums. Let's see. Leave that one. There we go. So I'm starting to go through the subfolders here of what sample packs I have. Now, you'll see I've got loads. I've been producing for years, right? So I've collected these over the years. You might only have one or two or 10, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's the same process. So in here, you're just looking through the subfolders, mm -hmm. yeah? And the easiest way to get going is find a kick you like. Now also, Stephen found this in samples, but you can go into drums up there yeah, yeah, if you don't even have sure. any samples. If you don't have any samples, you just find it up here. Yeah, now, I'll, do that, I'll do that yeah, also. Just, just do it like you don't do have anything. Also. So the easiest way to do it is just drag and drop, drag in onto the audio track. And there we go. I've got a kick drum in. Now obviously that doesn't sound like much to now. It's a tune finished. But you're on your way to have making a start to exactly. creating your own thing. So the next thing we've got Just up cool. here is a grid. You'll notice numbers one, two, three, four, and five, and so on up the top. Mm. Dance music falls into a grid. Now what I like to do is just duplicate by holding con uh, by holding Alt. I think it might be Control on PC, but duplicate and drag. Now we've got four kick drums, which is the start of your first ever loop. I mean, right? Hey, that's a good start. Now, the way I like to work is I create a loop, and up here you'll see this wee yellow thing. That's the, the loop marker there. Now, I've looped that. So now, what's happened? So well, the kicks aren't in the right place. The kicks aren't in the right place, right? So what we need to do, all your timing and stuff, to be honest, is the hardest stuff you're going to face. It when will you be the hardest you face. This is why we're going to try even. and break it down for you, right? So they were, were one beat too slow, I think. Mm -hmm. They should have been. Uh, there should be another kick, kick in between all of those. Absolutely. So let's try this now. That sounds a little bit more like a dance tune. Here we go. Right. Now, next thing, decide on what tempo you're going for. You can locate the tempo up here. Yep. 120 BPM. I don't usually normally produce that slow. It's just a personal preference. You might. Do do what you would do. I would go a bit faster. 1260. Let's give them that high energy. So there's a kick drum in there, right? And you can watch this video back. But in, all I was yeah. doing was I found a sample folder, yep. located the kick drum, dragged it in, and I've matched it to this grid that was already there. Mm -hmm. Okay? So next thing, hi-hat. Well, that's it. So you now you need to start logically thinking as a music listener that you probably already are. How does a tune be, how, how is a tune formed? What other elements are in there? So a hi-hat, and where would you put the hi-hat? Would you put it on the kick? Would you put it in between the well, kick? Typically, any fan of dance music knows the hi-hat goes in between your kick drums. Mm -hmm. 
or on 16s. Yeah. So that's four per kick drum. Mm. Not for the sake of keeping it simple, you can experiment and do all sorts of different Absolutely. patterns and all that for sure. This is the purpose of this video is keeping it so simple. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's find a hi hat. So let's go into drum hits. And now we're using this part up here now. So we want to have a look. Hi hat. It's all named that. So pick out one that you like. There's loads in there. I'm going to go for a 909 though. To that crispy sound. Which is get the crispy sound. Yep. There's so many. You're so many. Spoiled yeah. for choice. Totally. Sometimes you might even want to use an, another instrument. You know, it can be anything. So look what I'm doing again. I'm dragging it in. Just over the top of a new channel. Boop. It pops it in. Simple as that. There we go. So look, I just highlighted, copied. Now, oh, saving that there. And now we have this. I see that. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Now, the song's done. <laughs> uh, but the first thing you'll start to notice when you're getting to this point is your volumes. Things are going to come in loud. Things are going to come in hot. And you're going to need to start monitoring volumes really the second you start adding clips in. So mm -hmm. over to the right-hand side here, you'll notice zeros beside everything. Yep. Important stuff. And you want to be constantly monitoring these. Now, when I generally start a track like this, I have these turned down. So just using the arrows, I'll turn them down, say a wee three, just at the start so nothing's too hot at the moment. I and mean... I'd, I'd say another good thing for people just starting out, a lot of people get bugged down by the numbers. Mm -hmm. And one thing we get asked, what do you set your thing to? Or what do you, it's like there is no real, it's just until it's not hurting your ears really. Yep. Isn't it? Well, that's it. So this hi-hat straight away is too loud. Yeah. So the hi-hat needs to come down in volume. So you're just mixing as you're going, bringing that down there. Because the thing in dance music, a lot of the time, what I find anyway, is the kick drum is the thing that you, you use to mix everything else underneath, depending on the style of music, of course. But the kick drum is usually a good point of reference to mix things up to it. The kick's usually the most powerful, along with your bass. Yes. So hi-hats don't need to be as loud, so I'll always bring that down a little bit. There you go. And see, when you've just opened up Ableton, that gets you excited. It does. See, once you've got to that point, you're like, man... This is exciting. I've just done. I know, knew how I felt when I first done that. Yeah, years yeah. and years ago. And the thing is, as well though, like off the back of that, you sit and you hear that, you start coming up with other ideas, and you go, "This could maybe work in there." The issue is when you're starting is out is getting that idea that you're thinking of to actually be on the screen and work for you. Yeah. In the way that you're thinking, but that just comes with time. Again, it's about just throwing something down and get something moving, man. Absolutely. It's just about getting something moving, Gal. You couldn't be more right about that. You can get bogged down in sample choice and things like that. But yeah, yeah. the key is just to get rolling. You might start out and it's a house track and then it turns into more techno. Yep. You just need to get rolling with it, don't aye, you? Aye, it does. I think people put too much pressure on themselves to have this amazing finished track instantly. And it's like, look, don't worry. That's the. I mean, what was the statistic we read recently about Picasso? And he had like 100,000 pieces of art done but we know about 50 of them or something so um, think how many pieces he had like to create 10 to 50 thousand or something yeah. that he'd made and we only know a like a bunch yeah and it shows you just it's a numbers game and also you've just got to create not every project you make is going to be a finished tune yeah yeah not every project you make is going to be you know a number one <laughs> a number one you know <laughs> but it's a numbers game it's just enjoying the process and absolutely the point of this video here is if you've just opened up ableton you're like what am i doing here mm -hmm. Follow this video and you at least get a bit of a look down. And that's a start. Yeah, and or even maybe you just feel motivated enough to walk away from the video and go, right, do you know what? I'm overthinking this. I just want yep. to sit down in the studio and get, get something moving, man. That's hashtag. Exactly. And the thing is, music inspires music. So a kick and a hi-hat and a clap will inspire chords. It'll inspire other percussion. It'll Absolutely. inspire other things. So let's find a clap then. Yes, a nice wee clap. So I'm going to go back down to my folders on the left. Let's see. Hello, Tony. Ali as well. Let's see. We'll get to your comment in a wee bit, Ali, for sure. Darren, Lewis, Gary, 
Malk, Jason. Lovely to have everyone on board. There's a few I can't see there, so sorry. Susan, hello. Let's just see. Hey, so now we're Claps. gonna fill in the clapping. Doesn't really need to be specific for this demo. I'll go to absolutely up to drums on this. Yeah, we'll go I'll back up to drums. I just do that. Nice. Crispy. Some again, lovely crispy claps in here. Quite, quite like that. We'll just drag it in. Yep. Again, same process. So the thing with dance music is typically the clap will land on the second kick drum. So I'm just going to put that on there like that. Watch my volume. So I'm going to pull that down. Because yeah, we know it'll be loud straight away. I'm looking down here at my master, so you'll see the masters at the bottom. Mm -hmm. The master is at the bottom here, so that's set at zero at the moment. A lot of producers sometimes they'll drop that right down to minus six straight away. I just tend to drop the channels. Yeah. So I'll highlight them all at the same time and just drag them all down. Now this is for complete beginners. This. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to overcomplicate anything with anything too technical. This is just for those guys who are maybe a bit intimidated when they open up Ableton and go, what is this? I'm dying to make music, but I don't quite know how to get over that first hurdle. That's what this is for, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we put a kick in, hi-hat in, and a clap in. Now we can get some open. You know. See, that sounds pretty good. Levels are good. Um, I can guarantee you if we hadn't moved those vo the volumes down, that would sound horrific. Yeah, it'd be far too loud. We'd all be like, ah, ah. Aye. So, yeah. don't I do that. You'd be annoying some viewers. Um, another thing which is good is colour coding everything at this stage. Because it's starting to kind of annoy me already. It's funny because some, some producers that we know that we work with, they won't even colour code it until like the very end. Yeah. You know, I've seen some of the projects and the whole thing's grey and I'm like, <laughs> is that all like the same percussion or something? Is and he was like, No, 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 it's just I've just not colour coded it. And that, so it was all different. But because that, you know, I've worked with you, I see it, I like to colour code I've things. Got, I like certain colours for certain groups of sounds and things like that. I like basses in blue and I like all my hi hats in white. Don't know, it's just colour association really. <laughs> it's I don't mad, know. It's it's mad mad eye. So I'm just gonna make my kick here blue. There we go. Oh, I better show how to do that. So you're right clicking here. Anything you're unsure of on Ableton, just right click it. And it'll, bring, it'll bring you a drop down menu. You can see all these colours here. So I've just hi hat, put it white. They've added more colours this year as well, haven't they? I think they have they, eh? I'm not sure, but it's looking good. I'll go pink for the clap. You pink clap. So let's find maybe. So I'm saying like some sort of open or a, a shaker. Yeah, a shaker. Let's, let's go, go. Let's go shaker. Shaker. A wee kabasa, can you? Know. So let's let's keep it with audio. Yep. Because it's it's going to be simpler. It's what we're talking about. So let's drag this in now. The difference between a shaker is it typically lands not. I mean, it lands in the middle as well, but there's more to it. There's four for every kick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That now shakers are quite a hard one for people to get right again down to timing and the placement of yeah. them. They're a hard. They, they can be quite hard to get straight sounding nice. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make four of them right. Let's just see. There we go. So I'm going to put four per kick and see how that sounds right. Turn my volume down. See how it sounds. Just put it on a loop here. That's not too bad. It's actually all right. So you can see how the, the thought process behind a shaker actually works when you've got, I mean, the minute you add that in, there's a bit more groove going on. Mm -hmm. It's very straight, but it's added an element. Yeah. First thing I like to do here is change the volumes of this. We're getting a little bit more technical, right? But this is what we want to be doing. See when you double click at the top of a sample, that little bit up there, that, that line, you double click that the top of the clip there. And there's a little volume, individual volume control down here on this panel. You can change the volumes of these. Now the reason I do that, I'm, call, I'm changing this because uh, I want to change the velocity. The velocity is how hard you want something to play 
what what uh, percentage you want the the actual sound to play at. It's the same when you play a keyboard, you press it right in, it's a hundred percent. You play it soft, ten, twenty, thirty, forty percent, mm -hmm, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I want the one, I want this to build up, and then drop again. Let's see if we can hear it. We can hear the difference. Straight away, there's a little bit more groove. It's a lot more subtle as well. It fits in nicer. Yep. It's not that raw, just dropped in. Do you know what it is? It's um, more human. Aye, aye. Because um, we're putting percussion in and trying to emulate drummers. Yeah, yeah. Human drummers. Mm -hmm. Because that's what we are grow we, as human that's beings. That's the best. As human beings around a campfire. Yeah. Um, people were drumming. That velocity was all humanized. It was all different. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to recreate that, and rather than being so robotic, on Ableton, right? So we're going to double these, get a loop further extended, and get a loop going, and let's go. That there's grooving, mm -hmm. dead easy, um, and that was just by adding a nice shaker. Danny, how we doing? Definitely drum racks are used when building percussion. Again, this is for people that have genuinely opened Ableton for the first time. This is the easiest, most simplest way you can lay down a beat. Um, and even even now, I, like I, I love doing it like that because for the jam process, I find it's really, really fun just actually picking and looking through different samples and stuff. But again, absolutely, Danny, again, this is, this is for total beginners, so there will be things that... And the thing is, Danny, you're, you're not wrong. I use drum racks for building percussion as well, but I find audio drag and drop easier than opening up the drum rack. Mm -hmm. You know, dragging stuff in there, working out how to program MIDI. Yep. For the absolute beginner to get your foot or to get yourself off the ground with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Foot in the door is what it's yeah. saying. This is probably the easiest way. Aye. Um but you're not you're not wrong. There is no Right or wrong way, mate. Well, actually, as well, Danny, we do a lot. Of, we cover a lot of this in our membership. Um, we have a private membership that we upload content two days a week, every Tuesday and Thursday, and we cover stuff like building tracks, way more advanced oh, and, and beginner stuff it's, as well. It's you know, drum, it's drum racks, it's EQ, and it's compression. It's absolutely everything. Multi band compression, everything from nothing to complete track. Uh, that's the kind of thing we do in the membership. But this video specifically is just, you know, because we've had so many people asking, yeah, like, I want to get into make music, but I opened up Ableton and I'm like, oh, I don't know, yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm looking at. It's just you don't want to scale them off. So, <laughs> aye. But as as Gal says, there's there's plenty in the membership. Um, Thanks, for Danny anyone Lord. for anyone who's who's keen on this kind of thing, we'll leave a link to it. You can sign up to the membership for only a pound to try it out if you're into this kind of stuff. That's no bad. Cool. So look, we've got going here. So let's um, go back to a sample pack maybe and see if there's anything we can we can maybe add in, like something musical maybe. Yeah, yeah. Do we? Let's go into a Spectre pack maybe. Sounds. Good friends over at Spectre. That's Danny boy. That's quite cool. I don't know, let's just drag it in. Again, drag and drop. Let's pull it down. Let's find something else. <laughs> Bass loops. A lot of people probably wonder as well how you would make these things your own, I, but we'll yeah, do that another. Yeah, sure. How to make a, an audio sample your own is, is, is obviously massive. Just try to find something that might be suitable here. That just, sounds cool. Let's just drag it in. Let's see if it works. But again, Look this is sound wave. we're showing you guys the process of just getting working on Ableton. Dragging and dropping stuff from all different sources is going to be the key for you to just eventually build your own sound and, and getting into making tracks. Let's have a little play. That sounds pretty good. So again, let's cut the sample if we don't need it all. 
And I'll, I'll show you a quick way of how I'd maybe make this my own, this sample. So there's a, uh, there's a shortcut on here, Command E, which cuts up audio. That's a real great technique that I love to use to splice up this, the, the sample. And it gives me each and every, do you do this, Gal? No, I do not. It gives me each and every single part to then manipulate. So as as much as the original sample I've dragged in is cool, mm -hmm. I don't want to use it like that. No, no. You wouldn't want to do that because it's just dragging in. Again, at the start, you might want to do that. Yeah, Why yeah. not? Mm -hmm. There's no right or wrong way. But this wee technique here is pretty cool. Again, this is to more develop it, to make it a wee bit more your own. Aye. You know? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use fades. So fades are what come already programmed on Ableton. So see this wee button up here? Um, here's another tip for you, by the way. See, anything you don't know, if you don't know what it is, you can hover over it, and it usually brings you up there. So if you hover over it, down the bottom left, it will tell you what it is. No matter what it is you're hovering over. So there's the track name. That's there, automation mode. So when you're learning, just be aware that anything you put your, your, your pointer over, it'll give, it'll you, a give you a description down in the bottom left box there. Mm -hmm. Very useful. So let's put the fades on, and we'll start tightening up these samples. We'll splice them up. Again, we're just working in audio with it now. Right, let's see how that sounds. Dropping ones out, taking ones in, taking things out, see what happens. So that might be all I want from that now. You know, that might be perfect. There was a nice wee influx. Let's go and have a, look, a wee influxion. Nice word there, Gap. <laughs> And you can grab other parts from other bits as well. Mm -hmm. So there we go. I hope that wasn't too complicated. I did fly through that. Because again, this is just for those who want to get a bit creative with samples. Mm -hmm. But I've just cut up that bass line from a big long sample. I've moved a few things around. And it's just from cutting it around, cutting mm -hmm. it up. Mm -hmm. And just play with it until you're happy. See, that's, that's not bad for just rapidly throwing in. Absolutely, absolutely. For getting something started, you'll be rocking away. Then, like, once you feel that you're at a point where you've maybe got enough elements in there, yeah. And you think, right, I don't really know what to add now. Then that's when you were looking at the arrangement of the track. You would start to try and structure it out and you'd think about an intro, you'd yep. think about a middle part, you'd think about where would other bits land yep. or would it all just be going off straight from the get-go? Think about tunes that you already listened to. Yeah, yeah. They build to it. Well, we've um, got a full four-week, um, eight-hour um, walkthrough course on building a track from start to finish on the membership. Arrangements included in this. Yeah. We went from building a, a track like, say, like starting like this, mm -hmm. through to the mix and the master and the EQ and the compression to the arrangement, and then the, the actual final mix. So, all of that's in the membership. If you're interested, we'll put a link yeah. on it. And if not, you, the, we've got it on the website as we've well. We've got it on the website as which well. Which you can download. So, there we go. I think um, that's enough. That's totally enough that's, to that's, get you started. That's, that, we want to make the video kind of clean and concise, not too complicated. We could go on about that, you know. <sighs> All day, really. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted to just, you know, answer some frequently asked questions about, you know, folk that want to produce and how do they get going with some simple sample techniques on Ableton. So 
that's what we were doing there. Mm-hmm. Um, thanks to Danny and Ali for the input. Aye, thanks to everyone who's just commented. Brilliant. Yep, trips. Next one. Okay, yes, we'll be doing more of these as always. And again, head over to our YouTube channel. Go and check out all the great content we've got on there because we do loads of stuff last, but we've also got loads of interviews and podcasts and amazing stuff that we do in the community and that. So go and check out. Yep. And I. If you I, if you want more um, advanced stuff, more intermediate stuff, check out the membership link in the comments. Wait there, I've got a PS. PS. Phone in the council. Phone in the council. You need to go check out the phone in the council remix that <laughs> Stephen's just done on SoundCloud. It's going absolutely mental across TikTok. The Littlest Chicken, that's whose account you need to go and follow as well. And go and check your link, link in the, your Instagram bio and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's hilarious. For, yeah. Uh, Instagram's just Stephen Kirkwood and... And the links there. Oh, aye, the SoundCloud, aye. I'm just thinking about how ridiculous it is. Honestly, it's gone mental. And it, once you hear it, you cannot unhear it. So you've been warned. But people are loving it. It's going down really, really well. The track's amazing. And it's got a wee bit of a funny vocal in there from a TikTok video of a Scottish... A banging melodic techno meets Scottish banner, so... Pretty much. Sound as trips. Hope you enjoyed that. See you soon. Thank you. <laughs>